Okay, so um, I decided to make a video on this. Um, <clears throat> these are the two test subjects right here. I did a little, a uh, lot of research and everything online, uh, trying to figure out how to do this swap, and I found a couple of write-ups weren't really too detailed. Um, just basically a general consensus that it can be done, and people have done it before, but nobody really has documented exactly the step-by-step -step on it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for anybody that wants to do this swap. What I'm doing is I have this dark green one right here. This is a 1997 Infiniti QX4. Uh, it's got the VG33E 3.3 liter motor. Um, and right there I have a 2002 Nissan Xterra with the 3.3 um, VG33ER with the supercharger. And what I'm doing is a top swap. Uh, so we're going to see if we can put the blower on this one, get it going. Um, it's going to be somewhat of a, not really a cut and dry swap from what I understand, but uh, it should be definitely doable and well within my means. Um, problem is, is that the uh, the QX is great, uh, runs great, no, no issues or anything, but um, it's a dog. It is an absolute dog. If you get the later ones, they have the VQ35 DE um, with the twin cam 35s, and those have a lot more horsepower and torque. Um, doing this swap supposedly will get this motor up to pretty much what those are. So it's not going to be a race truck, but at least I'm not going to have to worry about getting slammed going out into traffic. Right now, the way it is, you put it to the wood, and it's like, oh man. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to see if we can rectify that problem. Um, so we'll pop the hoods on these two things, see what we got to start with. All right, let's see. So this is the naturally aspirated 3.3. And you can see how the layout is. And over here, we have The supercharged version. Bah, bah, bah. All right, so <clears throat> the parts that I already know I'm going to need to swap, obviously, is the blower, uh, the upper plenum, the lower plenum, the lower intake manifold against the heads, uh, the snorkel for the intake uh, behind the throttle body, and I'm also going to need at least the driver's side bank worth of spark plug wires eventually i'm going to replace the whole set um but for right now uh just you know money's tight so um i did just i'm planning on just either reusing this whole set right here which seemed to be okay just to get it going um and then you know because they're like 50 60 bucks for a set of spark plug wires for these things and not a lot of people have them in stock because well supercharge ones are rare um as far as i know the distributors are the same uh, fuel injectors and everything I'm going to swap over. Uh, the ECM, a lot of people that have done the swap have used the original 97 computer um, with no issues. Uh, but I think I might swap the ECM anyways. I think I might be better off doing that. I don't know. I've heard of some issues because this thing, uh, the 97 that I have has the all-mode all-wheel drive, the early version. So it's the automatic all-wheel drive. Um, this one has just a regular standard manual shift T case. So mine's got the electric switch and it also has the shifter on the floor for the ranges. Uh, this one just has the shifter on the floor. Um, and there is a transmission brain on those things uh, and they talk with the ECM. So I'm guessing I may have to stick with my original ECM because otherwise my four wheel drive may not work correctly or my transmission might not shift correctly. The transmissions themselves are essentially the same. They're both RE4 R01As, um, but because of the year split and because of the four wheel drive differences, uh, I think I'm probably gonna try starting it and going with my original ECM and see if it works fine. Um, the spark plugs are different. They're a heat range colder for the supercharged ones. So I'm gonna swap those. I got a new set to put in the, in the QX for that one. Um, let's see. The other thing I noticed is if you look on this one over here, this is the Cal they're both California emissions, but they're done a lot differently. Um, this one has an EGR valve. This one does not. There is no EGR. So 
Uh, also, the dipstick's in a little bit different location. I might have to work on that. I don't know yet. Um, also, just so that you guys know, the vacuum hose routing is totally different. Um, but I got both original hoods, which is good. This right here is the vacuum hose routing diagram for the 97. If you want to pause the screen, maybe take a screenshot or whatever. And then the vacuum hose routing for the supercharged version is right here. And same thing, you guys can do a screenshot of that if you'd like. Okay, so. Um, there's a few differences. The supercharged version has a bypass solenoid to operate the bypass valve. That is necessary. Um, you can get away with blocking it off and running it without it, although it's not suggested. Um, it's not going to be like a deal breaker. Allegedly, it wouldn't do any engine damage, but what those are for is uh, basically fuel economy. If you're not in a boost situation, that valve opens up the bypass the blower so that you essentially don't have any or very little boost in the intake um, and you get better fuel economy that way um, because the motor is not constantly fighting the blower uh, so if you have that hooked up it's it's a lot smoother running uh, you don't have as many issues especially if you get a stick shift it'll it'll bounce around a little bit from what i've been told um, but that's not a huge huge deal <clears throat> a couple other differences that i've noticed just looking around is the top plate this right here which has your idler pulleys for the non-supercharged is different than the one with the supercharged one uh, there's an extra pulley on the one with the supercharger you can see it right here uh, plus it's a solid plate of steel the other one is kind of stamped and it's got you know some holes in it and everything um, they do swap directly but uh, you do have to use this plate um, you're going to need, obviously, the supercharger belt, so that's going to be different. The other thing that I've noticed is the front pulley on the crankshaft is a 7-rib belt. Um, the one that is on mine is a 5-rib. And you would not want to just throw the 5-rib belt <laughs> on, the, um, on the supercharger. It won't grip as much. You'll get slippage. You'll wear out the belt faster. Yeah, sure, it'll work but you'll run into inconsistent boost issues. Uh, you'll also, um, possibly alignment issues, I'm sure. Um, now, unfortunately, because the supercharger belt does run around the air conditioning compressor, um, the pulley for the compressor is seven rib as well. I've been told the easiest way to get around this is just swap the whole compressor. Um, however, my compressor is a reman unit and it's fully charged i really don't want to get into evacuating that and recharging it i have the stuff to do it i just don't really want to if i don't have to um so what i'm going to try to do is i'm going to try to swap the clutch on the front the clutch and the pulley because i believe the compressor itself is the same so i'm going to try to just get away with doing that and see if it works if it doesn't i'll end up having to do a full swap for the compressor the other thing I've noticed is the mounting of the accessories is a little different between these two motors. Um, they're two different chassis. Uh, the Xterras are a little bit smaller engine compartment, a little bit smaller truck. Um, so there are differences like the power steering pump on this one is mounted on the passenger side and it has a serpentine pulley. Um, on mine, it mounts underneath on the driver's side and it's a V-belt pulley. And you can see, maybe, underneath the compressor. Yeah, you can just see the edge of the pulley right there. And if I take and give you a shot down here, <coughs> you can see. Um, so what I'm going to find out on that is a lot of people that do it, you know, a supercharged swap on, you know, going from an Xterra to an Xterra, I guess they're either, either they're all serpentine with no V-belts or maybe they're just doing the same year. I don't know. But... Um, they don't have a V-belt to deal with. So what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna try swapping the pulleys on the power steering pumps and see if that works. But I don't know about interchange, whether that's gonna work out or not. Um, I do know the pumps themselves are different because of the mounting location. So I don't think I can just swap pumps. I don't think it's that easy. So that might need some figuring. 
Um, the other thing I was thinking also is I might be, when I get the crank pulley off, I'm almost wondering, a lot of these, the outer pulley is bolted onto the rest of it. And if I find out that that's the case on both trucks, then I'm just going to take and swap the outer pulley and, you know, theoretically I should be okay uh, without having to, you know, swap the power steering stuff around. I mean, I kind of like the idea of having a cert belt versus a V-belt. I like those better. They grip better. They're smoother. They're quieter. Um, but if I can't do it, I can't do it. We'll see what has to happen. Um, if you're going Xterra to Xterra, this throttle cable right here, you need to take this out of the supercharged version because the stock one for the naturally aspirated ones are about a foot long. And this one, as you can see, starts back there and it loops all the way around and then back to the throttle body. Um, so I've been told that the stock one will not work. So you'll have to worry about that. Um, the cruise control one, I believe, is the same size. But you will need that. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, there's a couple other things that I noticed that are a little different on the intake. Where, let me see if I can get my hand in here right where my finger's pointing, right there, there is an electrical switch of some sort. I think that is the bypass switch for the supercharger. Not positive, I can double check it. Um, but my car does not have that. <laughs> so, I <laughs> have to figure out that. Uh, as far as the EGR valve con uh, concern, what I'm gonna try to do is I am going to try to just block it off. I can't switch manifolds because they are different exhaust manifolds because of the chassis difference. So my exhaust will not bolt up to this manifold. Um, so what I'm going to try to do on mine is I'm going to try to basically um, just unbolt the EGR tube out of the exhaust manifold and just plug it with a pipe plug. I believe this is regular NPT thread, um, maybe three quarter if I remember. Um, and then we can just either tune out the E, uh, I'm sure I'm going to get a light on it, you know, the service engine soon light. Um, but after I get this done, I'm planning on doing a tune on it anyways. And when I do, I'm going to see if I can just tune that part of it out and not have to worry about it. I could always take the bulb out so I don't see the light, but I don't like doing that. I like having an SES light that actually works because if there is an issue, I can plug it in and find out what it is. And I'm not going to always think everything's fine. Um, so that's a highly suggested thing to do. <clears throat> But there's also a lot of differences as far as some of the solenoids here for the vacuum hoses. Uh, some of them do the same things as mine, some of them don't. I'm going to have to look at the uh, vacuum diagrams that I showed you guys, see if I can figure out what goes what and, you know, how to do it. But, um, you know, because all the swaps that I've seen so far are Xterra to Xterra as far as the write-ups. I have not seen one yet that goes from an Xterra to an R50. Um, so kind of in uncharted territories, but I have a feeling that uh, when it gets done, this thing's going to be, you know, not, not a beast, you know, we're not talking Mad Max or anything, but uh, if I can get it up to the horsepower and torque of at least the VQ, this I think would be a much easier swap than doing a VQ swap. I have seen a write-up for one of those, and whoa, you don't want to do it. Um, the other thing, obviously, you would need is a full intake gasket set. Make sure it is for the VG33ER. Um, and there is a Victor Rhines part number that AutoZone can get you. Uh, I'm sure other places can get comparable things, but it comes with all five gaskets. It comes with your two gaskets for the lower intake against the cylinder heads. It comes with your uh, lower plenum gasket, which is the long one with the six big holes. They are different between the supercharged and non-supercharged version. And then it gives you the uh, upper plenum perimeter gasket, and it also gives you the snorkel gasket against the supercharger right here. Uh, throttle body gasket does not come with it, um, but I'm probably going to be using this throttle body anyways. Probably not even going to unbolt it off the snorkel. Just going to swap it over as is. Um, the part numbers on the mass airflow sensor are different. So I'm wondering if because there's boost involved, I'm thinking that I might need to swap that as well. Um, but that's, I think they're literally just the direct bolt-on swap they look like the same housing or worst case scenario I mean I can always just take and you know take the two screws out and just swap the sensor itself um, 
but the numbers are different. The distributors look to be the same. Um, the knock sensors are the same, but I already did the relocation on this one. You can see it's mounted on the top of the intake manifold right there. I'm going to keep that set up uh, so that because originally it mounts like way underneath the lower intake in the valley, which I think is a stupid place. You always get false knock codes on these. That's why I did the relocate. That's what I actually had for an issue. Uh, and that fixed that. But uh, everything else I think is pretty much the same as far as uh, the wiring harnesses and everything. There may be some differences to do with some of the solenoids and things like that. I don't know if I'll have to swap the engine harness or not. If I do, then that's not a huge deal. Especially if everything's all torn apart anyway. It's all right there. Um, I know the oxygen sensors are the same. Uh, the fuel line connections are different. I may have to work out something on this. Um, you can see the feed line on this one has a th uh, threaded connection on the truck side and it's got the two bolt flange on the intake. The return line, <coughs> excuse me, the return line is clamped on both sides. Um, on this one over here, they're clamped on both sides for the feed and the return. Um, I don't think it's going to be a huge, huge deal. Uh, worst case scenario, I can always cut the tubes on this uh, over here on the fuel rail. I could probably just cut that tube off and flare it a little bit and uh, and slip my connections on and, I, and it should be fine. Uh, there's not any additional pressure for fuel uh, on the supercharged versus the non-supercharged. It's actually the same fuel pump from what I understand, so I don't need to get into the tank or anything. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's what I know so far. <clears throat> so the first step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start tearing this stuff down. Um, first thing I wanna do is I wanna drain the coolant, get the antifreeze out of the way so I'm not making a mess. Um, then I wanna get the radiator totally out of the way. So you gotta undo, get a couple of 10 millimeters that hold the uh, coolant overflow in. You get a couple of 10s that hold the brackets for um, the radiator. You also have a couple of 10s right here and over here that, and I think there's two down below as well, I gotta check, that hold the radiator fan shroud, um, plier connections for your hoses, and uh, that'll get that stuff right out of the way. Shouldn't need to touch the condenser, um, but I'm gonna need some room to get the pulleys out and stuff like that. Plus it's just, it helps to just open everything up, just to be able to get in there without worrying about breaking anything. Uh, especially, you know, sending a wrench through the radiator or something is definitely not what I want to do. <clears throat> um, I do not believe that the radiators will swap. I think they are different. Um, I know that the fan shroud is different. Again, different chassis. So, I mean, mine's in very good shape anyways. I don't think I'll need to do anything as far as, you know, switching that stuff anyways. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll... Uh, We'll start there, and uh, after the radiator is out and all the pulleys and everything are all taken off, then I'll start tearing down everything else. Alright, so uh, part two of this video is going to be the actual teardown.